When plant samples first come in to the University of Nebraska's Plant and Pest Diagnostic Clinic, there are a variety of tests that we will do in order to figure out what exactly is going wrong with them. And we always ask that people submit a sample identification form along with their plant sample. That provides us with most of the information that would be needed in order to successfully diagnose the sample. We have um, portions for where you're located, which gives us a good idea about the, the localized environment, as well as individual issues for what you're actually seeing on the plant sample. Remember, two to three days later when the sample gets to us from, via mail, those symptoms may have changed. It, when things sit in, a, sit in a plastic bag over the weekend, we get a lot of extra fungi that start to sporulate, and what, we, what I see when I look at the sample might be a little bit different than what you see when you originally wanted to send that sample in. The main types of plant pathogens that we see around here are, are fungal pathogens, bacterial pathogens, and viral pathogens. We also have some nematode issues, but fungi, bacteria, and viruses are the main thing that we get here in the Plant and Pest Diagnostic Clinic. So when a, when a fungal sample comes in, one of the first things that we'll do is we'll try to look at the sample and see, is it actually sporulating? And are we able to determine what the disease is based on the spore type that we see? If it's a bacterial disease, one of the things that we often have to do is cut the plant open, try to isolate and try to isolate that bacteria and then do a series of tests to figure out what that exact bacterial pathogen is. If, it's, if we have a fungal sample that comes into the clinic and it's not sporulating, one of the things that we'll all, all, often do is create a humidity chamber. Once we have a sample in the humidity chamber and we're able to see that fungus growing out of the sample or if it's on a individual plate, and we've been able to successfully isolate the pathogen that way, we'll then look at it underneath some of our high-powered microscopes. And that allows us to see those individual spore types to determine what exactly we are looking at. And the shape of the spores often determines what we're seeing. And so once we have an actively sporulating fungal pathogen on the leaves, one of the easiest methods we can use to diagnose it is what's called a wet mount. And all that we use for the wet mount is a glass cover slip, some clear scotch tape, and sterile water. And what we do is we'll put a, one drop of water onto the glass, onto the cover slip, and then a piece of the scotch tape onto the sporulating portion of the, of the, plant, of the plant leaf, and then transfer that tape onto our glass slide. And from there, we'll look at it underneath our high-powered microscope. And again, it is the shape of these individual spores underneath the microscope that gives us an idea of what that fungal pathogen is. In this case, we're looking at powdery mildew on, this, on these succulents here. And as you can see behind me, that we have, pl we have plenty of spores that have been picked up through the scotch tape and are readily identifiable on the, on the microscope. If we don't have an active fungal culture on the plant leaf, we may need to isolate that tissue and put it on a petri plate. And from there, we can look at a portion of that petri plate underneath the microscope as well, and there we'll find our different hyphal structures or potentially spores that have formed on that petri plate to help us identify what that pathogen is as well.